Hello and welcome to our short session on how to create a user-defined function block in Panasonic's FPWing Pro software. First of all, we need to create a new POU as a function block. So we select function block. We choose the programming language we think appropriate for the application, in this case, ladder. And if you require an enable block on the function block you're creating, then this is where you check the box. In this case, we don't. We select a name for the function block. And in this instance, we're just going to do a simple one to keep it easy and short. It's a motor start block. So type in motor start. And we select OK. You'll notice that the new function block has a slightly different symbol to our main program sections. This is to signify that the main program sections are scanned every time the PLC runs, but with regards to our user-defined function blocks, they are only scanned at the time they are called up within another main program section. First of all, we need to create the inputs and outputs to the physical function block. This is done by selecting a class of variable input or variable output, depending on what we're creating. We select an identifier that's appropriate. In this case, it's simply start. We tab along. We select Boolean because it's a Boolean trigger. And we can tab through the rest of the items. The next one we need to create is another variable input. This one is called stop. Tab through. Boolean again. Select from the list. Tab through. And then we need to create a variable output. In this case, this will just simply be motor run. Don't forget, of course, to ensure you put an underscore between each of the, the um, words, otherwise it will reject it as a non-valid variable. This is also a Boolean. And again, we can tap through. Okay. So our next job now is to create the code that goes within the function block itself. So what we do initially is click on the first section. We go up and we select a contact, place our contact, a second contact, and a coil. And in this case, we want to create a latch circuit, so we need one down below. Finish the code with the pencil tool, right click to get rid of that, and now we have our basic code. This particular contact does need to be inverted, so if we double click on it, select negation, click OK, we now have a negated contact. We have a number of ways to create our uh, tag names on here if you like, but obviously as we've created them here, we go across to our variables and they are now here. So drag and drop to the appropriate location, select enter, select stop, and motor run, drag it across and drop it and then again motor run to act as the latch. That completes the code inside this. Obviously, depending on what you wish to do within the function block, it's very simple to create as much code or as little code as required. We now go back to our main program section where if we go into our instructions list and we start typing motor underscore start, you'll see it's there ready for selection. We simply drag it and drop it. We now need to give it an appropriate name, or in this case an instance name, for this particular function block. So if you were starting a number of motors, then you may choose to give an appropriate name that applies to it. So it might be motor start, um, say, solage pump, so underscore solage. Hit enter, declare the variable. And then we need to apply our appropriate connections. Now we could do that simply through direct addressing, such as x0. Or we could actually give it a name. So we could create it as a global variable, saying, uh, so it might be appropriate to stop underscore sellage. There or enter. We now want to choose it as a global variable and we give it its FP address, which is x1 in this case, and hit enter. Item declared.
declared. On the output, we can do the same thing. This might be simply Y0 in this case, which is the first of the outputs. And that's as easy as it is to create a user-defined function block. Thanks for attending.